people in a, in a really hermit crafty kind of concept to give multiple people multiple levels of interaction with the game now if you I, you videos that don't just show you the build and then make you wait and get to it so if you're just here for a bit of inspiration to building your own stable or just want a bit of a design idea of what you can do with a stable i'll show it off now and then you're kind of two minutes and done and if you do go off and build your own stable then fantastic show me send me a tweet on at mgj the p or you know put in the comments here that you've built your own stable and i'll check out the video uh this is i say just a I'll do a quick overview of the stable so you can have a look around and see what I've done. So we've got the, the office here where you come to buy your horses, put your money in there. There's services where you can buy things for money. Um, we've got some jockey attire for people who want to race the horses. I say all about immersion. That's my kind of key point. But if you were just looking to make a stables and looking for an idea and something you can do with it, and this is kind of it. So they've got the control room here, which controls the race. Detail for anyone who's interested in the the actual mechanics of the game and the redstone and using this on a server for multiple people to play and it's not just for a solo play build. I mean, if you're just building it for yourself and you just want something that looks pretty and here it is. This is kind of the idea. So you've got your race track here. It's all lit up under the grass. We've got uh, dispensers here that dispense water for the steeplechase. If you're wondering what all that is, but again. If you're interested in the redstone and the full thing, keep watching. I'll get to all that in a minute. It might be about a 10 minute video or so. But uh, we've got a show jumping course in the middle. So you start and end at these lights. Horse trips the lights. You start your timer. I mean, at the moment, the timer is just me standing on there with a stopwatch. But, you know, if you want to set up a, a dropper clock that fires potatoes into a chest, and you time it that way, whatever you want to do fine uh, we've got some trip wire hooks on the jump some of the jumps as well so if the horse trips that you know if it works there you go the horse trips that when it's going off they get a two second penalty and you record the fastest time that's, that's just simple little course design in the middle nothing particularly difficult horses can jump up to five jumps uh five blocks so it's you know, there's nothing too complicated here but only but only like the top horses are going to find it really easy to clear all this um the track is as big as it is just because of render distance like if you go too far that way a couple more blocks that way you can't see the players so you kind of lose visual of people racing around the track uh, but that's the that's it that's the the core design i say if you if you're two minutes and done you just wanted to see the track get some ideas and build something there you go thanks for watching guys i'll see you soon but if if you have your own server and if you would like to know the intricacies of this and there's a lot more to this project than just you know building uh, a stables and giving horses and cows some silly names there's actually a full server wide um game for people to play at different levels um so the backstory and the full workings of the project um as i say really inspired by hermitcraft Hello, a zombie. why don't i have a sword on me that was a poor choice you go away now is not the time you want to buy a horse you need diamonds i doubt you're going to drop diamonds oh, this guy's this guy's tough there you go right Blech. right go on. so yeah big fan of hermitcraft love watching the series uh and the Things like the green headhunt, for example, had multiple levels of involvement from people. So there was someone who, like, was stealing heads. There was people who were collecting as many as they could. There was people who were really interested in building a really fancy vault. There was people who, you know, just wanted to cause mayhem. And there was a lot of different levels of interaction from different people that could do what they wanted to do. So I started off with a few horses in my cow pen i used to have my old base over here and there was a pen here with some cows in and randomly one morning there was two horses in there and a couple of horses outside inside bred them up and built a shed around them gave them some silly names and said hey hey you want to buy some horses you know it's it's the um it was the early point of the game for me i still had my starter house and things so it was just a way to make a couple of diamonds from selling some silly named horses uh, but one of the other people on the server, it turns out one of those horses was hers and she'd left it in the pen for safekeeping while she was away doing something else. So instead of taking her horse back, she bred up the horse and gave me a new horse and named that horse. 
But then she offered to breed up some horses for me uh, so I could sell them. We'd split the profits and sort of go into business selling horses together. So that's a good idea. Yeah, we can do that. And then I had a sort of a, a little spark of inspiration. I said, well, why don't you make your own stables over at your base and then you can compete with mine? And I was just thinking, you know, competing in horse prices and cool horses with funny names and things. And I thought, well, why don't your horses actually compete with mine? You know, we could we could do races and things. And then suddenly the floodgates opened in my mind. I was like, well, people could buy the horses and they could race the horses. And then we could have like a, a leaderboard or a tracker board of like whose horses have won the most races and whose stables they've come from and so many different things. I'm going to build a track. And so I just built a big oval out of dirt and grass and just sort of let it go around uh, while the other person started building hair stables. Um, but I had a lot of ideas of what I wanted to do and what could be done and how I could get other people involved that didn't want to race the horses specifically. Uh, so I did this, or this was over somewhere else before, but this is the book I wrote to kind of advertise it to the, the people on the server who came back past to see what I was doing. So we've got the Grazing Saddle Raceway features for executive members. So I could sell a VIP pass, which gives them extra seating. They don't just sit in the stands. They've got like nice luxury items with food. There's, I thought we could do betting booths so people could come in and place bets on the horses. Uh, I wanted to have, I had big plans for the stadium, which I have completed. And again, I'll say, I'll show you the redstone. So the dynamic course layout to give different options. And then sort of to sell what, that, so they were my plans of what I was going to do with the site. Then we've got the Grazing Saddles Raceway sort of advertisements. If you want to race in this, you have to regard the following rules. You must own your own horse. Your horse must be pedigree certified horse. Now, that was a big point to make sure that the immersion was there, I suppose, because there was nothing to stop people. Like, full disclosure, my horses are just random wild horses. Tamed, shoved in a pen, that's it. There's nothing special about my horses. Any horse from any field just as good as all these horses they're not they're nothing remarkable they're just horses so there had to be a level of investment for people who wanted to fully immerse in the event or the concept whatever you call it if they wanted to go the whole hog and breed horses and build their own stable thing there had to be a reason why they didn't just find a couple of horses breed them and then keep them in a in a hole in the ground and that was it so the levels of immersion were kind of two tiered so you know someone on the track side may just want to be a spectator you know they just might come watch the race you might have your punters that come and bet on a horse then you've got like the stat junkies that may go around and want you know inside track information on who's the fastest so you might go oh otto van ruthless is in the steeplechase he's got a phenomenal jump but he's not that fast okay but he can clear the three high jumps with ease there's gonna be no problems with that whereas someone like Knickerbocker is much faster, but has a four high jump. So he, if he misses the top jump, he may struggle to get over some of the jumps. What he makes up for in speed, he may lack in consistency over the jumps. Lash, three and a two. If he's in the race, he's not even going to get over the three jumps. Don't bet on him. He's going to fall at the first hurdle. That kind of idea. So the stat junkies can have that kind of fix from looking at statistics and who's going to win which race and things. So... That was kind of part of the con. Uh, from the uh, the breeding side, you know, you might just have someone come along and want to buy a horse. That's it. Someone comes along and buys a horse. They say, hey, I want to buy peanut butter. I like peanut butter. That's a pretty horse. Don't care about the stats. I'll just pay 16 diamonds for the horse. They put it in a little paddock at the base and they have it as a, a friend. They keep it as a pet. They use it to ride around their base in. They have it just to say, I own one of the pedigree horses. Easy enough. That's their total involvement. Then you might get someone who wants a racehorse. So they may look at that horse and go, well, I could pay 16 diamonds for that one. Or I could pay 32 diamonds for this one. And everything's rated out of five. So this guy's got top speed and a really good jump. He's going to be a brute on steeplechase races or just normal hurdles. Or I want a show jumping horse, so I might get Otto here. 
who's got phenomenal jump but no speed but he doesn't need speed to get over these big jumps in the middle he needs consistency over the jumps you might want a special order so you breed up a particular breed of horse you might say i really want a paint horse but i want a gray paint horse or i want a white more white paint horse that kind of idea i want a particular horse that i can have to breed and that's when you get into the full immersion of it so you might have um people who buy a couple of horses from you that want to breed up their own and that's where this comes into it to stop people um just bringing a random horse every horse has got a deed so you've got otto von ruthless he's an apple loser white blanket this is a document to validate the sale. That's all. It, 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 it's just something I wrote. It doesn't. It, okay. It's all for immersion. You don't really need it. It doesn't change anything about the horse. But you need to present that if you want to race the horse on the track. So you need official documentation. If you want to, if you don't want to buy a horse from me and you want to breed your own and race your own, you need to have yours approved. So we've got certified stables on page four there, which is mine the other person who built their stables so you've got competition to buy from you can pick the perfect horse for you um if you want to make your own stable which you've got another person who's currently building their own that i haven't been to look at yet to certify you have to pass an inspection and when you pass an inspection you get you can get like a permit that you can put up in the office to say this horse stable is validated to breed pedigree horses but what i've been giving out is named armor so it's just gold armor with a thoroughbred certified and you can have different tiers so if someone builds you know a shed with a couple of wheat bales in you give them a, a leather one if they build a nice little paddock with uh, a little field to run around in you give them an iron one if they build something a bit more complex you give them a gold one i mean if you want to do if you find enough diamond armor you could do that as well it's just few and far between unfortunately Let's say so the, the governing board for the horse standards is basically again just solely for fun and immersion um and it was more to restrict the use of the racetrack to people that are actually involved in the game and wanted to play with all the the trimmings kind of idea let's say we'll have open events where any horse can race it doesn't really matter it, it, i say just for fun i don't want to the last thing i want to do on a server like this is to um, exclude people because they don't want to spend diamonds on a horse or they don't want to spend all their time building a stables they might just want to buy a horse store it at someone's stables they might want to bring their own horse we can have open days wild card events that kind of thing where anyone can race anything they want easy peasy um, bits and pieces again if um, the individual stables want to make their own armor their own silks their own color patterns so they're all uniform you can do that I say it's really only limited by what you want to do this is just a kind of an overview overview um but the track itself was kind of the big project and the thing that took forever and um underneath is a mess of redstone but i'll show you kind of what it actually does so this is the let me put the book back so i don't forget this is my control room i only finished this yesterday so hopefully it all works i don't know so we've got the options here single jump double jump triple jump then you've got your retraction sequence ones there uh pit and water and i was going to put a gate release in as well but i haven't got around to that yet so you've got your your track so if you want just a single jump which isn't anything there you go one two three four now horses don't jump over single they just ride but if you just want something that looks a little bit easy it's fine then you've got your double jump one two three four or four up for the double jump then you can have your triple jump one two three four now i didn't bother making a, a quad jump for that because we've got the show jumping course in the middle if you want to go one further and put a four a quad piston extender in you can the redstone on that alone was enough to make my, my mind melt because i'm really not that good at it but then you can I haven't put an automated sequence for retraction because it's all individual switches for different heights and again i was just going to make my my brain hurt so if you want to retract it you just follow the sequence i've numbered all the labels so hopefully if anyone did come in here and fiddle around with it, it i don't think it's breakable 
and then you've got your retraction everything should be flush with the ground again sweet wonderful i'm glad that works <laughs> uh for steeplechase races we've got a th um three wide pit with dispensers along the edge so you've got water here so you fire it twice to get yourself some um, water source blocks all the way along uh, if you pull it twice again it retracts the water into the bucket but because it sources the water stays but now all the dispensers are filled so you can re-raise the pit and that's it that it's, it's not that complicated but it was that complicated because i had restricted myself to trying to keep it to the width of the track which is obviously very difficult when the jumps are pretty much the width of the track I tried to restrict it to um, the length of the track as well. But the water, this was all built on water because I didn't logically think things through when I started the project. So I had to clear it all out. So everything's encased in glass. But if you come down here, you can kind of see the, the, the switches work vertically by sending sticky pistons down. Uh, with redstone blocks is set off the next one, that's set off the next one that's set off the individual cables so when you flick a switch that extends the redstone into that extends the redstone into that you know, da, 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 all the way down that lights that up and off goes a signal to wherever it's supposed to go you've got your um pit there which is controlled by this system of redstone this one wasn't particularly complicated it's just quite resource intensive you need a lot of redstone torches lots of repeaters and lots of sticky pistons which on a bedrock survival realm is a pain because just, just getting slime is a nightmare. Uh, triple piston extender is very straightforward because on bedrock you don't need repeaters going into the pistons. You just need redstone going straight into them. So you have block, 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 block all the way up. And then you connect up the right colours to the right one. So I had light blue, medium blue, like normal blue, and then cyan. And on the other side we've got green and pink. So I can kind of, just so I could keep track of the colours as they went round um as i say the redstone itself inside is a total mess just because trying to get everything to come out of very small spaces because there was no spaces on the sides really so you had to go down and i didn't want it to interact with anything else so a few of them i had to build through the you know flush with the floor uh, you got your tunnel here and because it's four different jumps we had different <laughs> I say it was a long-winded process, but you can kind of see from out here that that, that the idea is straightforward. If you've got, if I had a bit more sense, I'd have taken this side out a bit more and had the redstone just come off each individual track in a straight line, gone across, connected up to the other one in a straight line, gone across and into the thing. But you know that's neither here nor there. It's too late. It's done now. It's my little underwater cabin that I built, kind of around it to make it look a bit prettier if people did come under um but yeah that that's it that is the the whole concept of the racing stables and as i say it was purely about trying to involve as many people on the server as i could get and to make them have their own choice of how in depth they wanted to get with the server and how much they wanted to provide so it wasn't really a big deal that um that it looked fantastic or it had everything working perfectly so it was just a concept to kind of get other people involved and say one of the uh after my racing my horses are kind of racing horses one of the other stables that's been built is more focused on show jumping there's a third stables being built a couple of thousand blocks that way that looks phenomenal and if i do another video i'll probably do like a stable tour of the other bases uh, but the other stable is based on war horses so with maximum health and endurance and she's gonna build um like a mountain trekking course she's next to like a big spruce forest so she's gonna build like an off-road off like a, a, an, an extreme endurance trek for the horses through the forest and things uh more plans i've got for this i'm gonna bring get rid of this ice here and bring all this out around here sort of not pave it all off but build it an arena around this side will have stands along here there's going to be some vip seating a bit further forward with some glass so you can see the full track i say there's going to be betting booths in here there's going to be food stalls you can do like little merchandise shops whatever you know whatever you want to do um but there's a lot you can make 
and there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, as I say, this took me about a week, maybe two, to put all this together. It, but as I say, pure survival mode, so it's it's more gathering resources and dealing with the blocks. Um, and that's it. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you have been inspired by doing this, then I hope you, um, you get in touch. Send me a tweet. Make sure um, MGJ the P. Make sure you send some photos. Let me know what you built on your server. And, you know, if, it, if you like the idea, if you've got any ideas, any concepts you want to build, anything different that I could have done or anything you want to add, let me know because, you know... I put a lot into this to kind of get the idea off the ground, but the best idea is you have a think tank and better minds than mine will come back and find easier ways to do things or more fun ways to do things. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Go do something productive the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.